My ex left for someone else when my kids were young. He paid child support until he was medically released from the military in late 2011. Since then, he hasn't paid a penny. Whenever I requested help, like $10 for school supplies, he tells me he has no money. He's always begged me not to file through the state and apologize for not paying. Of course, he always promises that he'll start paying at some point. He gets about $2,000 a month from the VA, but his work history has been spotty at best. His parents have helped with his bills. He's had an excellent job for the past two plus years now, but still can't help. I've given him all required visitation, plus extra. I want my kids to be able to have a relationship with their dad. Recently, he had words with my husband, and my ex said that he doesn't owe anything, morally or legally. He said I should file through the state to tell me to my face he doesn't owe, his words. So I talked to my kids, now teens, and got their go-ahead and filed. The state will be pursuing about $70,000 in back support, plus current support for the youngest kid. The reason I didn't pursue support before was twofold. One, working sporadically, he didn't have much money. The second and most important reason was that my kids would have been dragged into it if I had filed. They would have been made to feel guilty for everything they had. My ex and his family would have told them that I was greedy and didn't really need the money. And so now their dad and his household were doing without because of us. I didn't want my kids involved in that drama, so I just worked more to make it happen. I know it's a lot of money, and between him and his current SO, they have quite a few kids living with them. This will put a tremendous financial strain on them. So, am I the idiot? My ex didn't pay child support for almost 10 years, then said he owed me nothing and to file with the state, so I did. He got pompous, thinking he's all grand and OP would get a little return from the government. Get the grill ready. This fool is about to get skewered. You are not the idiot, OP. He was legally obligated to pay child support and instead left the financial burden on you. He owes this money. The fact that he has other children now isn't your problem. Not the idiot. He owes that money to his children. And the fact that he thinks he doesn't owe anything, morally or legally, is mind-boggling. It might put a financial strain on them, but it's his responsibility to fix it, not yours to avoid it. Did he ever think about how you were financially all those years where he gave nothing to help his children? Your responsibility is to look out for your children, not to try to protect an irresponsible adult from his own mistakes. He owes that money to OP. She paid all the kids' expenses the whole time instead of only half of them she's legally responsible for, effectively giving her ex a large loan to cover his share, which has now come due. He knows he owes. He wants to drag out not paying as long as possible, but he knows he's wrong. Not the idiot. You didn't get pregnant by yourself. Those are his kids too, and it's about time he fulfilled his responsibility to them. He's got other kids to support too, and only works sporadically? It's time, long past time, for the people around him to stop enabling him and demand he starts functioning as an adult. You do know that the VA pays him for having kids, and that money is supposed to be used for the kids. You need to contact the VA. He's receiving money for your kids every month, so he's stealing from them. They can calculate it and give you what is yours out of his check. He told you to file so you could get told how you'd get nothing. That's entirely 100% on him. While there are kids in his family, and that's kind of you to think about, this system exists to make sure parents provide for their children. He's a parent. He needs to provide, even in retrospect. If you're seriously feeling guilty for taking money from his current kids, set up a modest college fund for them or something similar with a small portion of the money. You don't have to do that at all. But if it helps you sleep at night, then go for it. I'll preface this by saying that I have two daughters, Amy, 27, and Lily, 19. Lily just had her first baby months ago. The father is out of the picture, and she only went to college one year, then dropped out to focus on her son. She's living with us right now and doesn't work. Amy is a college graduate, working and is engaged. She's doing well financially. She and her fiancé bought a decent apartment together. She visits every now and then, and she visited us yesterday for half an hour to tell us she was going to Ohio on a field trip with her friends 
and visit many places and national parks there. Lily looked sad throughout the entire visit and didn't speak until Amy left. I asked Lily what was wrong, and she said it wasn't fair that she didn't have a job, a degree, or enough money to buy nice things or a new phone, and not even time to go on trips and enjoy herself. While Amy has money and recently bought a new apartment and is going on a trip now and then, she said it wasn't fair because she's younger than Amy and deserves to live her life too. She asked why. I frowned because I sensed some envy and resentment towards Amy, even though it's not her fault that this is what Lily's life is like. So I answered her question by saying that Amy didn't make any of the decisions Lily did and didn't choose all the roads Lily did, and so she shouldn't compare herself to her. Lily looked at me stunned, saying did I just basically blame her for the decisions she made and the road she chose to walk down? I didn't respond as she lashed out, saying I was clearly judging her, which was cruel of me since she never said she regretted having her baby or dropping out of college, but I made it about that. I said I was sorry she misunderstood my point, and she called me a few names then stormed out of the kitchen and kept ignoring me and refusing to speak to me, saying I knew what I did. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your delivery might have been a little awkward, but it was the truth. Lily is living with the consequences of her own decisions, which is adulting 101. Amy is also living with the consequences of her own choices. If Lily doesn't like her life, then she can choose to change her situation. From the sounds of it, you are supporting Lily and her child, at least by keeping her housed. She sounds a bit entitled, spoiled, but perhaps needs some mental health support to help her see her future differently. Everyone's the idiot. She didn't need to blow up, but she should have been more tactful. Clearly, she knows her choices are what shaped her life so far. That being said, the choice to keep a baby when you're so young is an incredibly hard one. Even if she 100% doesn't regret her choice, she has to live with its consequences every day. So you should have used the opportunity to reassure her about her choice and get her excited in her future, not say, you made your bed, now lie in it. I, 33 male, recently got hired at a large company in the South where my wife and I moved months ago. My wife was excited about my new job and talked about preparing a surprise for me, which got me excited, but I didn't know what it was until she showed up at my workplace two days ago with a meal she said she had prepared specifically for me, since it's my favorite. Apparently, this was her surprise. I was a little upset that she brought it to my workplace. My vicious, brutally honest, and sarcastic co-workers got involved and kept teasing me about the meal. One of them, Austin, joked about how mommy is so supportive by bringing food to my workplace. I felt like crap as he and other co-workers kept laughing at me. I went to work the next day and Austin kept making jokes about me, saying stuff like, is mommy going to bring lunch today as well? And when is mommy coming to change your diaper? And some other stuff. One of them who was someone I don't know well said, oh you guys, I can still smell the meal, my names, mom brought yesterday. She's such a great cook, bless her heart. And the stupid giggles kept on. I felt so awful I went home and just blew up at my wife, telling her she flat out embarrassed me and just torpedoed any prestige and respect I had among my coworkers. I told her what Austin and others have been doing and asked if she was happy for giving them ammo to come at me like that. She argued that she was trying to do something nice for me and didn't care about what people might say. But I was a selfish jerk who only cares about what others think rather than how she felt by my constant berating over a meal she put effort, money, and time to make and bring to me. The argument escalated after suggesting that she could have waited until I got home to surprise me with this stupid meal instead of showing up while I was working, which made me seem unprofessional. She said she came during a lunch break, but I was still working. She said at this point, I clearly find it easier to blame her than stand up for myself against these childish bullies. I said I didn't appreciate what she said, but she replied that I should be grateful she cared enough to bring me a home-cooked meal and thanked me for showing her it's not worth wasting any more of her time cooking for me after this. I told her to stop blaming me for something she caused and asked her to admit that maybe she should have consulted me before bringing the meal over so I could avoid being the butt of every joke my co-workers told. 
I don't even know how long this is going to last. She told me to man up and either report them or quit. I was floored by what she said. I had to walk out because I couldn't take any more of this and felt like she wasn't listening to how her behavior caused me an issue at work. You are the idiot. Your wife is an absolute sweetheart. Your colleagues are bullying you and bullying your wife in return isn't going to fix anything. Those coworkers are immature and I cannot for the life of me fathom why their opinion of you matters more than that of your spouse. Instead of standing up to workplace bullies who insult your wife and bully you, you take it out on your wife because it's easier than being a man and standing up to the real problems. Why not mock them? At least my wife cares about my well-being. Are we jealous boys? Because my wife took time out of her day to try and make me happy? No. Instead, you attack your wife? You should say sorry to her and then stand up to those bullies. You are the idiot. Your new co-workers seem to have the right impression about you, honestly. Would you blame mommy if you were getting bullied in school growing up? Your logic is just as immature as their lame remarks. She didn't come over to your desk during work hours and wrap her arms around you and drown you in kisses in front of co-workers. She didn't bang on the manager's door to tell them they did a good job by hiring you. She didn't ring the company phone line to introduce herself to the secretary. That's embarrassing. She brought you a meal that she made to celebrate your win. Imagine having someone so unappreciative as you for a partner. Jesus, I feel for her. My 28 male mother hosts these dinners where she usually wears traditional slash cultural clothes, cooks the traditional cultural foods, etc. She wears traditional clothes because my dad loves seeing her dressed in them because he thought she looked beautiful in those clothes. We can wear what we want. However, since the dinners are usually made in a traditional cultural setting, all the guests wear something culturally appropriate. However, my wife, 24, doesn't like wearing culturally appropriate clothes and tells me it's rude for my mom to host such dinners where people might feel uncomfortable. I told her it isn't even compulsory for anyone at the dinner to wear culturally appropriate clothes. Most guests wear it because they see it as a fun theme for dinner. My mom is completely fine with guests wearing even a garbage bag to the dinner. Not literally, haha. -ha. I told her to wear what she likes and come to dinner. She said she also feels excluded when she's the only one not wearing culturally appropriate clothes. So I told her that's fine and she could stay at home and my mom wouldn't feel offended or anything. I would go there, meet my mom, have dinner and come back as soon as possible. She's mad at me now. Am I the idiot? Edit. My family is Polish. We live in the U.S., but my mom likes to host these dinners as she misses her childhood home. My wife spent her childhood in Alaska. She's not Polish. The dinner usually takes place on my dad's death anniversary as a way to remember him. My mom is usually very sad on this day, so I go to comfort her. Holy smokes, no, not the idiot. This is a dinner you have once a year on the anniversary of your dad's death? And she not only won't attend for your sake, but she doesn't want you to attend? Friends, I don't like your wife at all. This is a big red flag. And I'm betting this is not isolated behavior. I don't know how much you have invested in this marriage. But if your wife can't see the importance of this event for you and your family, I'm advising you to run. This woman is bad news. Not the idiot. But what exactly is she mad for? That you're going without her? Or that you're leaving her at home. If she doesn't want to dress up, that is up to her. She can still go and enjoy herself. I think it's great that your mom found a way to remember your dad and you're a good son for supporting her. But please don't ever stop doing this. Your wife needs to understand that this isn't about her and if she's uncomfortable, she can make other plans. She's mad at me because I'm supporting misogyny by following a culture that expects men and women to dress a certain way. However, it's not forced on anyone. My mom wears those clothes because my dad loves seeing her in them. Everyone else is free to wear what they like. My mom is very quiet and usually doesn't come over unless she's invited because she doesn't like to intrude. She even tries to find common interest areas with my wife. For example, my wife likes cooking, so my mom sends her Polish recipes over chat or audio messages. 12 years ago, our grandparents died leaving their beach house to me, 37 male, and my brother, 35. The place is within drivable distance of my town. 
In addition, my work is such that I can do it remotely a lot of the time. I now have two small children. Because of all these factors, I've been in the beach house much more, basically summering in it through the years. At the same time, my brother, who lives a lot further away, only crashes occasionally or requested for a couple of weeks while I often nipped in through the winter. My brother is now married to my sister-in-law, 25. My sister-in-law has very specific ideas of what their new married life will be like. Pinterest board, custom hashtag for social media, cry cut affirmations pasted around the house. Naturally, the beach house features prominently in it. However, despite their having to drive four hours to get to it, she insists we should divide time equally and leave it free if they want it and that she may well redecorate it to make it more hers. I've redecorated that house to suit me. I asked my brother for no money, except for structural issues. There are three bedrooms, so there are no reasons we couldn't be there together. My brother literally told me he wasn't there enough to care about swapping use of the main bedroom, which is the only seafront one, and in which my husband has built our bed. She wants that particularly, claiming it would be their perfect love nest. I think it's my bedroom, and while she's welcome to my brother's, she can't have mine. We also established how to work it. I have built my patterns around it, and I don't want to change it now. She says she can't be there while we're there, because it would ruin the feeling of retreat. My brother is happy with whatever she's happy with, but I know very well determined opposition on my part will make him back down. The last discussion we had about it was when I pointedly asked, would she like to decoupage, live, love, laugh on the kitchen table? He winced and left the room. So if I want to hold on to the house on my terms, I can. But does it make me the idiot? To be clear, I don't object to them being here more. I don't object to them having more alone time. I don't object to them redecorating their room and bathroom. I don't object to them bringing things in. But I object to swapping my room after 12 years having her overhaul spaces I redecorated and spent money on, and agreeing to a rigid 50-50 schedule when I already know my brother with regular long drives. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Your brother is suddenly changing what he's agreed to because his new wife is demanding it. They don't get to redecorate without your approval since you own half. Good luck with the new negotiations. If you have the cash or credit, buy his share. This is a bit tricky. In my opinion, everyone's the idiot here. I think you've gotten used to having primary control of the house and being able to do whatever you want with it. But it does belong to both of you, and your brother's life has just changed. So the way that you guys use the beach house may have to change as well. I get that the house came into your possession quite some time ago, but I still think it's wrong to try to hang on to control like that. Nobody owns the room solely. They are all owned by both of you. It's completely unfair to take the best room in the house and call dibs. It's a holiday home, not your personal home. You don't get to dictate anything solely because it's not just your holiday home. Unfortunately, you are the idiot. I completely get your point of view, but like it or not, it's a shared space for all of you. You chose to make renovations knowing it was not legally your room. I think you and your brother need to sit down and figure this out without insulting his wife. It's not your space. It never was. You don't have more claim to it just because you've used it more. You should be happy you got as much use out of it while you had the opportunity.